Guess what, Ultra Banana? We have a brand new world championship happening. And it's been four years since then. What what are they going to do? It, it's probably going to be a giant eSports thing. Uh, Billy Brake is going to show his sausage-like nipples. He's going to be shirtless. We're all going to be hard. It's going to be a fantastic event. You will be hard. Your smile will be worth it. Everybody will be jumping for joy. Or they'll stick him into a classroom. <laughs> it looks like my biology class. <laughs> In high school. <laughs> oh, you're a banana. Let's dive into it. Try to relax your anus, your shoulders. I can't even say that I'm angry. I'm just disappointed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the world championship boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we try and get my piece of junk computer to work here so I can have a little bit more light on my face. I want to talk about the World Championship 2023. That's much better. And <laughs> ah, the massive disappointment that was this year's Worlds. Konami, you had one job. And as you're going to start seeing on the photos here, <laughs> they totally dropped the ball. Congratulations. 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 Try to relax your anus. Congratulations. They they threw the ball into the Tokyo Dome, which we're gonna be talking about in a minute, and they just completely misunderstood the assignment, as you're seeing in the photos. At one point the screen went black and then they were showing the commentators' names. Oh my god. This was a mess. This was a massive mess. And then, of course, when they finally get to the finals, then they put the Mastership players and the Duel Links players and then the players that actually matter, the World Championship players, in the finals on a big grand stage. You blew it. While everybody else had to play in a closet or a basement, whatever it was, with the, the drapes closed. So they can't even look outside to the outside world of Japan as the opponent's just comboing off on them because their D-shifter's at two and they didn't draw it or whatever that garbage ban list was. And it was it was funny at one point before the final started to hear Billy Brake just uh, completely shill for Master Duel where he's like, oh, I play the game every day. You can take it with you on the go. And I'm thinking, yes, Billy, because I want to play Yu-Gi-Oh while I'm taking a dump especially in Master Duel on my phone or my iPad or my Switch. Like, no, the, the game is garbage, as we've talked about before. But enough jumping around. <clears throat> what happened at the World Championship 2023? Uh, there's no reason to really talk about what deck won. Polly won with Dragon Link, yay, but like the Worlds is its own format. So that part is sort of whatever. What makes Worlds fun and exciting, number one, this was the first World Championship that we've had in four years. The last one we had was in 2019, before COVID hit and kind of just threw a wrench into everything. And the main draw with Worlds is either going if you're close by enough or want to travel to go watch, um, or even just to watch the stream and to see the ambiance, the entertainment of it right you know like what they what they showed with the finals is what they should have showed the entire event don't have the players who made it to the finals be on a grand stage that should have been for the whole event i remember when they had uh worlds in orlando florida i actually went to go watch which you didn't need a ticket to get in and apparently for this one you needed a ticket to get in we'll talk about that in a minute um, but I went and showed up and they had other events going on. There was a venue next door where they're having like regionals or something going on. They had stuff going on there. You could sit in a chair and watch the world championship players play or the players who qualified for worlds play. They had the Kaiba and Yu-Gi-Oh voice actors. I even tried out to be a, a, a voice actor in the Yu-Gi-Oh Dark Sided Dimensions movie. Uh, I got cards signed by the voice actors, the CEO of Konami at the time, Konami of Japan, which was some woman from Japan or whatever. Anyway, she was the CEO at the time. She came and like you got to meet her and it was really cool. Like it, it, was, it was a really cool experience. And now there's been stories going around that the venue that Konami had for Worlds bailed out on them at the last minute. So they had to figure something out. I don't know, but just so many errors. At one point they had the word lift points instead of life points on the screen. And just a complete 
utter disregard for professionalism and just putting on a good show. I get that things go wrong, but I mean, I used to work in television and we would always have our main plan and then we would have a backup plan. Then for that backup plan, we have we would have a backup to the backup. Then on top of that, we would have a backup to the backup to the backup. Like literally, like that's what you have to do in television, radio, live stream situations. You need to always have backup on top of backup plans. So I can't even say that I'm angry. I'm just disappointed. And also I'm, I'm not gonna pop off and say that I'm angry because Konami is known for banning people for things that they say online. So the last thing I want to do is say, you know, you guys are a bunch of idiots and then I get banned, like how Distant Coder got banned or whatever that situation was. So it's it's just a shame because a lot of people on like Zodiac Duelist and uh, just like YouTube comments in general were like, I'm disappointed to be a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Like I'm embarrassed. You've got all of our players playing in like a basement or like a high school classroom. Like what is going on here? This is not uh, the setting that we should be in. You know, like big hype moments. Like when I saw Jeremy activate D shifter against the tier element player that he got a draw with. I mean, imagine if there was a crowd, the whole crowd would be like, oh my God, they would have been freaking out. And instead we just get the announcers going, oh, and he activates dimension shifter. Oh my God, it's so crazy. And it's like, okay, like that's nice, but the crowd and the ambiance is what makes the event. You know, imagine if nationals, the finals were played in like a back room with no audience. Like it ruins the spectacle of it. Now I did see a story on Zodiac Duels from this dude who was like from Italy or France or something. And according to him, this is all his story. There's three sides, every story, yours, mine, and the truth. He traveled from France, Paris, whatever it was in that side of the world, all the way to Japan to go and watch Worlds. The uh, Konami staff, Japanese, uh, or excuse me, they were Japanese, so there's a bit of a language barrier, but basically it came down to you need to buy a ticket to get in to watch Worlds. There was nowhere where you could buy a ticket. And even on Konami's English site for uh, the United States, if you go into that one, under their World Championship section, it says no information. Like it just says like no information available. So like there was nowhere there to buy a ticket. I didn't see anything on the OCG side, even in the schedule that they put out on like your Twitter, if you clicked on it, it showed like a schedule. There was nowhere to buy a ticket. Um, so I don't know how the guy could even got in. Maybe he bought one off his phone at that point. I don't know. But like, even like I said, when I went to Worlds in Orlando, you didn't have to buy a ticket to get in. It didn't make any sense. Um, now, with that being said, is that a big deal? Yes and no, because if they gave him the opportunity to buy a ticket there, I guess when he showed up, then cool. Because if you're coming in, if you're flying from France to Japan, you're not hurt for money. You know, you're not like your boy trying to still find a part-time job after not having a job since May. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's the, the flip side of that coin with that situation. Is that right what happened? No, I mean, Konami should just let him in, but... It, you know, that is what it is. It's just something else to add on to the pile of disappointment that this was. And on the flip side of this whole argument, there's also the argument that you can make that, you know, things fell through last minute. But then at the same time, if they fell through last minute, you have backup plans. You don't stick people into a basement and then have all these issues. They've had four years to plan something like this. So why would you wait until the finals to show the two people who could potentially become the world champion and then <laughs> screw up their names. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're a ball, but we are not hard. And on top of that, do you know what their announcement was? Our sphincters were tightened. We were ready. We were waiting nine days. What is this 25th anniversary project? We are waiting to capture the moment. It's a tournament. <laughs> it's a tournament. <laughs> oh, oh my Lord, pour some maple syrup on my hairy chest and call me dad. So February 3rd through 4th of 2024 in the Tokyo Dome, there's a 25th, they call it the Quarter Century Legendary Duelist Tournament. No other information available at this time of how you enter. It might be something just for the OCG. Maybe it's something where TCG players can come in. It's too early for Worlds because Worlds doesn't happen in February. So... It's a tournament. Yay. No master rule update. No anime. Nothing. Just nothing. Um, there was some other stuff that came out where like you can buy artwork pieces of cards and stuff. I don't care about that crap. No, no one cares. The world's cards or whatever. If you want to go spend thousands of dollars on world championship prize cards, you do you. I don't care about that. I'm not wasting my money. <sighs> 
just disappointment all around. Like, wow. Definitely the worst worlds I think we've ever had. Maybe something will be different next year, but this nine-day wait to find out it's a tournament. And then the English side of the live stream would sometimes be on like the, the thumbnail, like your World Championship 2023 live stream, and then it's going to be starting soon while the Japanese one is going on. And the Japanese one, if you're watching that one, had no subtitles. So you're watching the live chat. It's all in Japanese. The only time you could tell someone saying something is that they're putting a thumbs down emoji or a thumbs up emoji. So when, when there was like some dude playing a flute, <laughs> there was a dude playing a flute. I'm gonna put a, a photo in if, if I can find it. But there was some dude playing a flute going hard in the paint on the stage before the war, before the finals started. And like all the Japanese people were putting thumbs down in the chat. And it's like, well, they're not happy about this. <laughs> on the bright side first time ever that americans won worlds all of the ocg players like fell out in the top eight so it was like all tcg players which was cool to see i guess i mean then there's the joke well ocg players need their max c of play but i mean it's kind of whatever i don't really care about that but just comedic really comedic guys konami you blew it you blew it Fish. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.